Welcome to the next part of our lesson in Aqueous Solutions, Chapter 4. We are beginning lesson number five, Concentrations of Solutions. So just to keep in mind where we're at, we're on the top of page 17 in our note packs. And this is now a calculator type of a question, so we will indeed be needing our calculators. So have one ready. This particular section we had covered very well in our first year of chemistry. So when I look at concentrations of solutions and introduce or remind us of a term called molarity, you're going to have a little bit of background knowledge as we begin this. So let me just kind of remind us a little bit of um, the algebra involved with molarity. When we use the term molarity, we're representing the concentration of a solution. Concentration simply means how much is dissolved, a given amount of solute in a certain amount of solvent. We reviewed the terms concentrated and dilute versus strong and weak. Concentrated and dilute, these two terms, let me get that written down, refer to the term molarity. Or there are other, um, certainly there are other ways to express concentration, but to a chemist, the term molarity, which is abbreviated with a large capital M, refers to how much solute in a given amount of solvent. I could have a 12 molar HCl solution, which is very concentrated, 12 moles of HCl per liter of solution. I could have a 0.1 molar solution of HCl. This is very dilute compared to the 12 molar. I could have a 0.001 molar HCl solution. And now I can see that 0.001 is more dilute. 0.1 would be more concentrated. And 12 molar would be the most concentrated solution. So increasing concentration looking at the term molarity. I wanted to remind us that we do know the word strong and we know the word weak. So what is the difference between how we define the term concentrated and dilute solutions compared to the term strong and weak? Strong and weak have to do with their electrolytic properties. How well do they ionize when placed into water? Strong electrolytes 100% break apart or dissociate or separate into their ions. Weak electrolytes only partially ionize or partially dissociate or partially separate as ions in solution. Strong and weak have to do with the degree of dissociation. How well do they conduct an electrical current in water? The weak, you remember, had the old double arrow to illustrate that we had an equilibrium process where reactants turn to products, but products go back to reactants. The dynamic equilibrium set up in a weak electrolyte. With strong electrolytes, we had just one arrow pointing to the right, 100% of the compound dissociated. Strong and weak, concentrated and dilute. We could have a very dilute solution of a strong electrolyte. HCl is one of our seven strong acids that we memorized. We could have a very concentrated solution of a weak acid. Acetic acid or vinegar is a weak acid and yet 12 molar is very concentrated. So I do want to just make sure we take a moment and reflect upon the distinction between the terms strong and weak, electrolytic values, concentrated it in dilute. How much solute is actually dissolved in a given amount of quantity of solution? When we think about our definition of molarity, molarity we know is abbreviated as big M molar units. It's moles of solute per liter of solution, moles per liter. Some of us like that algebra tool, a little helpful round little buddy, where we can place the term mole per liter to come up with the big M molar units. And this little trick says whatever the variable is that I'm looking for, I would cover it and I can find the algebra formula. If I wanted to know how to calculate moles, I cover it up. What's left? Liters times molarity. If I wanted to know molarity, moles over liter. 
if I wanted to know liters, mole over molarity, and so forth. So we're just looking at the round little buddy. Wouldn't hurt us to remember the algebraic formula for calculating a mole, where we take the mass measured in grams over the molar mass off of the periodic table. Grams over molar mass gives us a mole. So we can definitely put that into a round little buddy just to make it convenient. Mass measured in grams on the top, the term mole, and molar mass. How about if I just am allowed to abbreviate MM for molar mass or molecular mass, formula weight, sometimes you've heard me say. Now reflect upon the common unit found in both of these algebraic expressions. It's the term mole. To a chemist we know the mole is the central calculation of all of chemistry. So if I'm looking at molarity times liter to pull out a mole, I can bring that down here, mole times molar mass to pull out a gram, and so forth. Let's just take an example and see what, what one of these problems might look like. Let's calculate the molarity. So we're looking for big M, molarity. I have a solution that contains 34.6 grams of sodium chloride, NaCl. And I'm going to dissolve that into 125 milliliters of solution. I'm looking for big M, molar units. To find big M, if this is indeed my target right here, big M, molar units, I need to know moles over liter. I'm given a unit of gram. I can do a little mole map work first, grams per molar mass to pull out a mole and then moles over liters to find formula weight. So it's really a two-step process. Part one, let's use the mass measured in grams and the molar mass to pull out the mole. So step one of our problem, the mass measured in grams, 34.6 grams. I'm going to give myself a little more room here. I'll come down here. Here's the given, 34.6 grams of sodium chloride. And now my dimensional analysis uses conversion factors. I want gram to cancel, and I want to go into the mole. I know that one mole of sodium chloride, I'm going to add a 23 plus 35.5, which is 58 and a half grams for the formula weight of sodium chloride. Hit that with me on your calculator. We'll take 34.6 and divide 58.5. The number of moles is 0.5914. And I'll just leave that um, as moles of NaCl. Now what? Grams over molar mass got us to moles. We're ready to come up here and look at that second algebraic expression, moles per liter, to find molarity, moles per liter. So big M will be the second step of our two-part problem. Let's take that very value of moles we found, 0.5914, and place that over the liter of solution. Now recall, we must have that in a liter, they gave us a milliliter, so we simply slide the decimal three uh, places to the left. 125 mLs becomes 0.125 liters. So here we have the moles per liter. So while that's on my calculator, I'll just leave that all in and go po divided by 0.125. And we find a molarity of 4.73 molar units of sodium chloride. Number, label, unit. Should we try another? Example two. Give myself some more room. Example two. How many grams of HCl would be required to make 50 milliliters of 2.7 molar solution. We want to know grams, we're given the molarity, and we're given the volume. Thinking about the very definition of molarity as moles per liter, moles per liter, 
If I want to figure out the number of moles, see what we're going to do? We're going to multiply liters times molarity. Finding the mole unit allows us to carry that down to our second round little buddy, algebraic expression. Take our mole times molar mass and find a gram. So this time in our two-part problem, our solution will involve two calculations using the molarity formula first and then bringing that down into the mole expression. So step one, let's solve for the number of moles. I'm going to take my 2.7 molar HCl solution and I'm going to multiply it by the liters of solution. Molarity times liter pulls out the number of moles. Now remember the algebra, big M, moles per liter. I'm just simply cross multiplying to pull out mole. But I've got to make sure that this is indeed in a liter. 50 mLs is 0 0.05 liters. So where are we at so far? 2.7 times 0 0.05 and is 0.135 moles. Step two of our two-part problem, let's solve for the grams. Solve for the mass measured in grams. And remember our round little buddy here, moles times molar mass pulls out the grams. We found the number of moles, 0.135 mole of HCl. Adding an H to a Cl gives us 36.5 grams per mole. That's our molar mass expression. So our old-fashioned mole map work. Mole times molar mass. And what do we find? 0.365 whoops, times 36.5. Let me repair that on my calculator. And I find 4.9275. Let's carry three sig figs, so 4.93 grams of HCl. Pause your video and talk to yourself. What were the steps that we just followed for number one and number two? How are they alike and how are they different? And when you've taken a moment to process those questions, start the video back up. All right, you're back. Let's go on and try a third one. What would the concentration be if you used 27 grams of calcium chloride to make 500 mils of solution? I'm given a mass. I need to do some mole map work to find the word mole. And once I find the mole, I can put it into mo my molarity formula to find big M. We have 27 grams of calcium chloride. I want to convert that into a mole unit, so I find its molar mass. A Ca, which is 40, two of chlorines, which are 35.5 apiece. When I sum that molar mass, I come up with 111 grams as its formula weight. The number of moles is simply found by taking 27 divided by 111. And our mole unit here is 0.2432. If your screen is mine, it has all kinds of decimals. I'll stop there of calcium chloride. Now that we know the moles, molarity can be solved by taking our number of moles just found above. and dividing it by the liters of solution. So my 500 mLs put in as 0.5 liters and I get a value of 0.486. We'll carry all three sig figs. Number label unit and we have that accomplished. There's a little part under this question what is the concentration of each ion? Well, this has a little to do with some stoichiometry, doesn't it? When calcium chloride 
dissociates. It indeed is a strong electrolyte. It's a water-soluble ionic salt. So a strong electrolyte 100% dissociates. We get calcium ions, aqueous, and we get two chloride ions, aqueous. Calcium chloride releases calcium and two chlorides. We know the concentration of our calcium chloride to be 0.486 molar units. The stoichiometric ratio, a 1 to 1 to 2 coefficient ratio. In calcium chloride, we would have the same number of calcium ions, so its concentration, 0.486, but notice how we get twice the number of chlorides released. So I'm going to double 0.486 and the resulting concentration 0.973 molar units of our chloride concentration. Calcium chloride releases one calcium ion and twice the number of chlorides. Our concentration of chloride indeed would be twice that when compared to calcium. Let's read through number four and take yet another example. We'd like to calculate the concentration of a solution made by dissolving 45.6 grams of iron 3 sulfate We're going to put that to 475 mLs of solution. We'd like to know the concentration, which is asking us to find molarity. So that's our target. What's the molarity? And then I see underneath that we'll talk about each ion as well. Let's begin by finding our mole value of our solute iron 3 sulfate. Given a mass, I need the formula weight or the word molar mass as my conversion factor. I need to add up the weight of two irons, three sulfurs, and 12 oxygens to find the molar mass of our compound. Iron is 55.8 and there's two of them. Sulfur is 32 and I count three of them in this formula. An oxygen has a weight of 16 and we said there are 12 of those. The sum of Fe2, SO4 taken three times, I found it to be 399.6 grams in every one mole of iron 3 sulfate. Let's use that molar mass. Take my grams given to me in the problem, 45.6, divide by that formula weight we just found and I have 0.114 moles of our compound. Now we can use that to find the molarity. Our number of moles we just found of our iron 3 sulfate per liter of solution. We had 475 mLs, so 0.475 liters. Moles per liter, 475, and I'm hitting that and I find 0.240 And the unit there is big M, molarity of iron 3 sulfate. Now if we consider the next part of that and ask ourselves what would that make the concentration of each ion, it really has to do with just the stoichiometry. How many ions of each dissociate? In our compound, I'm noticing that there are two irons. And when they dissociate, they're going to release two units of an iron plus three charge aqueous ion. And here's the polyatomic ion called sulfate. There are three units of the polyatomic ion sulfate that carries a negative two charge. My ions have charges. We determined the concentration of the iron three sulfate compound to be 0 0.240 molar. We're being asked to calculate the concentrations of each of those ions. 
Well, I can clearly see two iron ions will be released, so it would be twice the value of 0 0.240. 0 0.240 doubled is 0 0.480 molar units of the iron ion, and 0.24 times 3 is 0.72 molar units of your sulfate polyatomic ion. Three times the value for sulfate, two times the value of iron when compared to the compound of iron 3 sulfate. We're going to turn our page, top of page 18, and we'll find our next example, example 5. This is a little bit more involved simply because I have to use words. It's asking me to describe. Describe how to make 100 milliliters of a 1 molar potassium chromate solution, K2, Cr2, you know what, that needs to be O7. Can you make that correction on your page 18? Potassium dichromate, I have a subscript error. K2Cr2O7, which will indeed change our molar mass and so forth. So let's agree upon the correction to make the top of page 18 read K2Cr2O7. I want to know how to make that. Well, keep in mind that any type of ionic compound, I'm going to end up needing to know how much of this to weigh out. So what I'm looking for truly is my gram. I have a one molar solution of potassium dichromate. I'm going to multiply that now by my liter unit. 100 mLs is 0.1 liter. And what this is going to allow me to calculate is the number of moles of my solute potassium dichromate. So let's hit that first. 1 times 0.1 is 0.1 mole. We don't go to the scale and weigh things in moles. We go to the scale and weigh things in grams. So I have a little mole map work to make sense of this. My 0.1 mole of my salt, ionic salt called potassium dichromate, needs to convert into a measuring unit known as mass in grams. So I need to know the molar mass by adding two potassiums, two chromates, and seven oxygens. Let's do that. Chromium, or excuse me, potassium first has a formula weight of 39, and there's two of them. Cr chromium, atomic weight of 52, and there's two of those. Plus oxygen's mass of 16, but I'm counting seven of those in the formula. The molar mass I found, 294 grams. mole times molar mass, and the grams that I found would be 29.4, and let's record that. Now at this point, I have a mathematical answer, but I haven't truly answered the question because it wanted to know describe, and to me I will not give credit unless I actually describe, so let's do that. Let's give a description or, or a simple set of directions of telling a student what to do to make this desired solution. First thing our, our student would have to do is to weigh out, using a scale, weigh out exactly 29.4 grams of your salt, a solid ionic compound called potassium dichromate. Weigh it out. You're going to add 100, I had to go back and look, add 100 milliliters of water and some type of container. I'm sure you're going to use a beaker to make your solution. So after you weigh it out, you probably want to put it into a beaker. You'll add the 100 mils of water and it's 
always, always a good idea to remind that student to stir to make it indeed a homogeneous solution. You don't want to see any bottom part, any type of salt uh, still sitting at the bottom. So stir until it's uniformly dissolved. We have one more in this set. Let's take a peek and wrap up this example. Number six. How do I make 250 mils of a two molar copper two sulfate dihydrate? Copper two sulfate dihydrate. Now this, my friends, reminds us of an experience back in first year chemistry using a hydrated crystal. When we talk about a hydrated crystal, we use this little dot in the formula to say attached to, not to multiply, but attached as part of its compound inside this little crystal lattice structure is some water molecule trapped. We once conducted an experiment that masked the amount of water contained in copper two sulfate. We heated this blue hydrated crystal. We heated it strongly over a flame until it turned white. We turned it into an anhydrous form. Weighing it before and after the heating allowed us to calculate the amount of water that indeed was contained in the hydrate. So here this little dot, dihydrate, means there's two water molecules attached to the copper sulfate. The reason I'm stressing this is the water plays a role in the molar mass when we calculate moles. So let's do our unit of molarity, 2 molar copper 2 sulfate dihydrate times the volume but in a liter, and we'll pull out the number of moles of our solute. 2 times 0.25 is 0.5 moles. That 0.5 mole of our copper 2 sulfate dihydrate now see we need the molar mass, don't we, to figure out the gram. How many grams does one mole of copper two sulfate dihydrate weigh? Alrighty, so we have a little mole map work to do here. Let's take a moment and kind of sum CuSO4. Now copper two sulfate, copper is 63.5 plus the sulfur at 32 plus 16 times 4, I get uh, this particular part of the compound, that molar mass is 159.5, but there are water units as well, there's two of them. So I have two waters, two H's and an O is 18, the molar mass of water 18, but I need to double that because there's two moles worth. So that's 36, isn't it? Two units of water adds to 36. So let's sum the whole critter and we get 159.5 plus 36. This molar mass all together, 195 and a half grams. And that's what will get used up here as my conversion factor for copper two sulfate dihydrate. We have to include the water in that formula weight. Multiply that molar mass by 0.5 and we're finding an answer of 97.75 grams of our copper two sulfate dihydrated crystal. Remember it said describe, so I have to use words without the sentence or without some sort of step-by-step -step instruction for a student. We have to describe, what, tell, tell the student what to do to make this uh, solution up. So let's start by um, using the, a verb, shall we? Let's use measure or weigh out 97.75 grams of your copper two sulfate dihydrated crystal. We will measure How much water did it say? 250 mLs? 250 mLs of water with a graduated cylinder 
So this is just a little bit different than uh, what I set up above, a little bit more descriptive. Combine the two in a beaker. And oh, so important to stay stir until it's uniformly dissolved, creating a homogeneous solution. This is a good place to pause, reflecting upon the lesson so far, how to use molarity, liters, molar mass, and mass measured in grams to convert from one unit to any of the others. When you are ready, you're going to start the next part of your lesson and we'll talk about dilutions. How do I take a more concentrated dilution, a concentrated solution and dil dilute it to a desired concentration? MV equal MV. In the next part of our lesson on molarity, we'll talk about the process of making a dilution. To dilute a solution simply means to add more solvent, which is typically the water, adding more water to a known solution. So taking its concentration and lessening it by adding water. And remember that molarity times liter Molarity times liter always gives us this unit called the mole unit. The number of moles, mv, is equal to the number of moles, mv. See, just because I add more water to a solution does not change the original content of the salt that we added. So let's suppose I have this little beaker of water here and I, I just sprinkle in some sodium chloride. So here's a little sodium chloride crystals at the bottom, stir, 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 and it dissolves. Well, I can increase the volume of the water, diluting the solution, but I have not changed the number of moles of the original solute. So mole equal mole, MV equal MV, will be our formula for calculating how concentrated a solution is, how dilute a solution is, and how much water would we need to add to create a desired concentration. Another term that I will be using is called a stock solution. It's the solution of known concentration. It's typically what's sitting on your shelf in the chemical stock room. We use this to make a more dilute solution. So it's the starting solution. What do you have on hand and how much of it do you need to create the desired quantity of a concentration that your lab calls for? So let's just dive in and take a quick peek at how easy these particular problems are. We'll do a little practice problem. It's number seven in your note pack. We'd like to know the volume of a 1.7 molar solution needed to make 250 mils of a 0.5 molar solution. Reading through that problem, I'm given molarity and volume pieces of information for MV equal MV. Our first molarity of 1.7 molar times our target variable V1. How much of 1.7 molar? So those two go together. And the MV2 over here is 0.5 molar and its quantity of 250 mLs. Now friends, notice with this algebra, it is absolutely okay to leave this in a milliliter. Leave it in a milliliter and you'll get out a milliliter. So we'll hit V1 by simply taking 0.5 times 250 and divide that by 1.7. And let's hit that and see what we find. Our answer will come out in a milliliter. 0.5 times 250 time, or excuse me, divided by 1.7. And we find 73.53 milliliters. And it did not give us an identity of that solute, so we can't identify. So just a number and unit would be appropriate here. Should we try another? Let's read through eight together. We have 18 and a half milliliters of a 2.3 molar HCl added to 250 mils of water. What is the concentration of our solution? We have 18.5 mLs of a 2.3 molar HCl solution. Now as I'm reading this carefully, read it with me, is added to 250 mLs of water. So 250 mLs is sitting in there, 
we add 18 and a half mils of the solution so the new combined volume must be the V2. I'm going to write that out so you see the difference here. Up above in that first question, our target, the, the entire solution ended at 250 mLs. But here's a word that's just a little different. I take 18 and a half, add it to 250. Well, there's the add it to 250. We need that combined volume component there. And we want to know the resulting concentration. So we're going to be looking for the concentration unit of molarity. So 250 plus 18.5. That 268.5, that becomes the V2 in our formula. So let's calculate for M2. We start on the side without the variable. We get 18.5 times 2.3 divided by that combined volume of 268.5 and the new resulting concentration, 0.158 molar. And this indeed give us the unit here and label HCl. Let's read through another, number 9. 18 and a half mLs of 2.3 molar HCl is diluted to 250 mLs with water. What's the concentration? We have 18.5 mLs of a 2.3 molar diluted to 250 mLs. What's the resulting concentration? And I really want you to take care of 8 and 9. They are so similar but oh so different. The difference here, the word in number 9 does not say added to. It says diluted to. This is the total volume. They're not being added together. It says you're going to add water. So I have 18 and a half mils to begin with. I just add water up to the 250 mil mark. I didn't add 250 to the 18 and a half as we did in number eight. So just a slight difference in the wording of that problem, but see how important it is to be a careful reader. Number eight, we had to add the volumes. Here we do not. So let's do the algebra. 18 and a half times 2.3 divide by 250. And now our resulting concentration, a little bit more concentrated, 0 0.1702, so about 1 point, point 0.170 molar HCl. One more in this set. We'll finish this lesson. You have a four molar stock solution describe, that means words, how to make one liter of 0.75 molar solution. Well, our stock solution is 4 molar. How much will we need to measure out to create a desired amount, one liter, and it should end up to be 0.75 molar units for its concentration. Start on the side without the variable, so 1 times 0.75, you'll divide out 4, and V1, 0.1875 liters. Now I'm not done because the words here describe. Let's measure 1875 liters is 187.5 milliliters and I like that because that's what our graduated cylinders actually measure in as ml so the little marks on the graduated cylinder are matching the unit here now measure out 185 187.5 mils of your 4 molar stock solution using a graduated cylinder. So into the cylinder pouring from the stock bottle 187.5 mils and then stop. Now what? Add water 
up to the 1,000 mLs, that's what a liter is, is a 1,000 milliliter. You can certainly leave these in liters. You just want to be sure you have some common units here. And it's always good advice to tell them to stir to create that homogeneous solution all mixed evenly throughout. Stir it up, shake it up, make sure it's uniform. And now we have described how to make the desired solution from our stock bottle. We're picking up with the pH scale, and as I mentioned in the end of the last video, dealing with those very tiny numbers with the times 10 to the on the hydrogen ion or the hydroxide ion, we're going to look at an operation using a log key, the log function, on your calculator. Do you see the log key? That means times, you know, the base of 10. And so, for instance, just a, a quick reminder, when we hit our pH, we're going to be hitting on the calculator using the log key. And we need to memorize, remember, and perhaps you know this already, the uh, formula for calculating the pH of a solution. Since the pH is taken as a log-based function, a power of 10, and all of the numbers that, if you remember, we were using had a negative power of 10 with them, making them a very tiny number. Remember how we said, for instance, when the hydronium ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration, they were both equivalent to 1 times 10 to the negative 7. The log function is this base of 10. And so if you think about what that means, when I take the log of 10 to the negative 7, the power with which you're raising it to is negative 7. That would be the log of 10 to the negative 7. Well, we don't want negative numbers, and thus we put a negative sign in front of our formula so that the negative of that power of exponent becomes a positive integer. So that's why you're going to see the negative sign in front of the log formula, just to turn those negative exponents, these negative exponents that you're seeing here, into positive numbers. So when we calculate pH, the formula, pH is negative log of the concentration of the hydronium acid ion. Of course, the lower the pH, the higher the concentration of hydronium. So what does that mean, for example? If I had a 0.1 molar HCl solution, that would be the same as writing 1 times 10 to the negative 1. 0.1 is 1 times 10 to the negative 1. So when I take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 1, it comes out to be 1. The power with which you're raising that 10 made into a positive number. 0.01 molar HCl. That's like writing 1 times 10 to the negative 2. When you hit negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 2, see that exponent up here? Making it a positive number, it comes out to be 2. So you can see that the larger numbers have very low pHs. And the more positive you become on the number line, the less acidic and more basic the solution becomes. So we have a pH scale where the acidic solutions have pHs that are below 7. A neutral solution is a pH exactly at 7. And a basic solution would have a pH greater than 7. When we calculate pH, we use the formula negative log of the concentration of the hydronium ion. Now remember pH, the power of hydrogen. And that we know is the acid ion. So let's kind of get an idea of what the pH scale is showing us. See how the power of 10 here, 10 to the negative 7? We said if we took negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7, it comes out to read 7. That means that the hydroxide ion and hydronium ion are exactly the same concentration, and that value is 1 times 10 to the negative 7. That means it is neutral. And you can see a water molecule, especially as you think about when it self-ionizes, 
It has equal parts the acid ion, H+, as well as hydroxide ion, OH negative. Water has an equal amount of the acid ion and the base ion, so it is neutral. Now, as we go down the number line, things become more acidic. For example, let's just find coffee. Coffee has a pH, let's just call it pH equal to five, and I won't put a decimal on it, even though it probably does. Now, compare that on the number line from water, which is a pH of seven, to coffee, which is a pH of five. That is a, a motion of two spots on this number line. I remember what that means by base of power of 10. It means that coffee with two zeros after it, coffee is 100 times more acidic than water. Wow, just the slightest motion on the number line and the pH changes significantly. Look at, uh, let's say for instance, lemon juice. If lemon juice is given a pH value, let's just say <clears throat> for the sake of argument that it's two, it looks like it's a little bit higher, but let's just call it two. And of course the water, if the pH for water is given as seven, how much more acidic is lemon juice compared to water? Well, do you see how we're moving one, two, three, four, five spots on the number line? That's one with five zeros. One, two, three, four, five zeros. Lemon juice is 100,000 times more acidic than water. The opposite is true as well. As we go up, things become more basic. Let's look at uh, sodium hydroxide or household bleach. Let's just say bleach is 13. It looks like it's a little below that, but just for argument's sake, let's say it's 13 on the pH scale. From 13 to seven, one, two, three, four, five, six motions on the number line here. That means that household bleach is one with six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros. That tells me that bleach is one million times more basic than water. I'm emphasizing all this to get us the feel of what a power of 10 does. The pH scale is based on a logarithmic function, which means it's the power of 10. Each time I move one unit on the number line, it represents one zero. So I go 10, then 100, then 1,000, then 10,000, and so forth. As I compare the assist acidity or basicity for our solutions. So here we have some ideas of what, you know, different household ingredients fall in at. You can see Clorox, a very basic solution at a pH of 12. Here's household ammonia at about 11. Here's milk of magnesia or Philips uh, brand. And those are antacids if you have an upset stomach. You're gonna take a base to neutralize the excess acid. Milk comes in with a little bit of an acidic range. Lactic acid is found in milk. Look at the tomatoes at about pH four. Strawberries just slightly above three and lemons just a little bit above two. Stomach acid comes in very acidic. Stomach acid is hydrochloric acid, which is what we said was a very strong acid. When we calculate pH, it is a logarithmic exponent of the power of 10. And we're emphasizing just a difference of one pH unit has a huge effect on the pH of the solution. Remember, each time you're moving, it's by a power of 10. Just a very small difference in pH translates to a large change in the acid ion. So for example, comparing a pH of two to five, that's three units on the number line. That's three zeros is a factor of 1,000 times more acidic. Let's convert each hydroxide, I'm sorry, each hydronium ion concentration into the pH value. Do you have your calculators ready? I want you to become familiar 
with the LOG key on your calculator, the log key. Do not confuse it with LN. That is a different function. It's called the natural log. It is not the same thing. We want the log key, which is the base of 10 on our calculator. So for letter A, I want you to calculate the following. If pH is equal to negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion, or hydronium ion, this is the key sequence you should say. You know, let me pause a moment and pull up a calculator so you can see me hit it. Okay, perfect. I just wanted a quick moment to bring up my Google calculator. We're about to hit negative log of one times 10 to the negative six, and I wanted to just remind you how we would go about doing that. So I'm gonna hit the negative, and then see how that has an LOG key. You see that hand, negative log, and then in the parenthesis, one, and then this calculator uses EXP, or it could say EE, or times 10 to the, you just have to find your exponential factor on your calculator key, and I'm gonna hit negative six. Negative log of one times 10 to the negative six equals, and you can see that it comes out to a value of six. So we've just found for letter A, the pH of six, and I'm just going to include, well, I'll just leave it as six, no decimal. Letter B, pH is equal to negative log of one times 10 to the negative 12th molar units. So on your calculator, you're going to hit, clear screen, negative log of one times 10, that's your EXP, and I said negative 12 equals. You see how it comes out to the power of 12. And so here, the pH is 12. By the way, pH of six would be in the acidic range. pH of 12 is in the basic range. Letter C, negative log of one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and then the number one. That's our concentration of hydronium. So pH is going to be equal to the negative log of 0 .00001. Let's hit that, shall we? I want the Google slide, there we go. Negative log of one, whoops, is there a backup key? Let me clear it again. Clear negative log of point one, two, three, four zeros, and then a one, and then equals five. That's the same as writing one times 10 to the negative five, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five. One times 10 to the negative five came out to be pH five, which is also in the acid range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten zeros, and then the number one. So that's what we're going to hit on our calculator. Are you ready? Clear screen. Negative log of point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. then the number one equals 11. Our pH is going to be recorded as 11 because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That is the same as writing one times 10 to the negative 11. And this of course comes out to be in the basic range. Easy enough, correct? Let's see. What is the hydronium concentration in lemon juice that has a pH of about two? Classify the solution as acidic, basic, or neutral. Well, this would be another way of remembering if pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of hydronium ion, and this is what we're being asked to solve for. Let's manipulate this formula to show how to pull out the hydronium ion concentration. And it would be worth remembering this equation as well. 10 raised to the negative pH, 10 raised to the negative pH, gives us the concentration of the hydronium ion. 
So this time we're looking for H3O plus, and I'm given two as the pH. So 10 raised to the negative two is the concentration of hydronium ion. Now you can solve that. Let me just show you that key sequence. And I would go 10, and then do you see a little caret key? Something where you're going to raise to the power of. And on this calculator, it's x raised to the y. You see that? So it has this little raise to the power. And we want to go negative 2. 10 raised to the power of negative 2 equals, and that's 0 0.01 which is the same as saying one times 10 to the negative two. Those are exactly the same. One is in standard notation, one is in scientific notation. Either answer is exactly the same in my mind. They are indeed the same. Okay, great. So, so far we've said if I want to know pH, I have to remember to find it by using negative log of the concentration of hydronium. Or if I want to know the hydronium concentration, then I can change that formula to say, well, that's going to be using 10 raised to the negative pH power. Memorize those equations to help you solve for pH. Let's keep practicing. What is the pH of wine that has a hydronium ion concentration of 3.2 times 10 to the negative fourth molar units? Well, I'm learning to remember that pH is found by taking negative log of the concentration of the acid ion, the power of the hydrogen ion. So on my calculator, I'm going to just simply hit negative log of 3.2 times 10 to the negative 4. And when I do that, I'll have the pH. 3.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So I'll hit negative log of 3.2. Then here's my exponent key, and it's to the negative fourth power. 3.2 times 10 to the negative 4. Let me make sure I remember that, right? Three point, yep, I had it, just giving myself the confidence. And then I'll hit equal. And I get a big decimal, 3.49485. Let's just truncate that to conclude two decimals, 3.49. And let's see, uh, this had two sig figs, so I should probably include two sig figs. And so I'll say pH is equal to 3.5 pH units. There's no unit to write after that. They're just called pH of 3.5. How'd you do? Just takes a little practice with your calculator to get familiar with the log key. Perhaps you've used it a thousand times, perhaps it's a brand new function to you, but it really is simplistic, just hitting a button to find the pH using log key. So here we're given each of these hydronium concentrations and we're asked for pH. Why don't you pause the video and just practice using your calculator to hit the sequence of negative log of each of these values. Come back to me when you're ready to check your answers. Well, if you're back, I've gotten ahead of us just in writing out the formulas for each, and I'm just going to hit on my calculator. I have my handheld calculator, and just see if we get common answers. Negative log of 1.8 times 10 raised to the negative sixth power, and my screen says 5.74. I'll include just one decimal point, so I'll say 5.7 pH units. Of course, that's in the acidic range because it's below 7. Negative log of 
times 10 raised to the negative 12th power equals, and this my calculator says 11.035, I'll include just one decimal, so 11.0 pH units, and that of course is basic. Now this had three sig figs, this has three sig figs, so I'm gonna just leave that as 11.0. How about letter C? Negative log of point zero 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 eight eight, and my screen reads four point oh five five. So let's two. I'll raise that to four point one, and that of course is below seven, so it's acidic. And one more negative log of point one two three four five six seven eight nine. 10 zeros and then a 762. And this came out to be 10.118. We'll use three sig figs, so I'll look 10.1. And that, my friends, is in the basic range of our pH scale. Seven is neutral. Numbers below seven is acidic. Numbers above seven are basic and exactly seven we know is neutral. We're just practicing with hitting our log key going from concentration units to a pH. Now here, we're asked to go the other way. We'd like to know the hydronium ion concentration in sweat that has a pH of 5.8. Remember the two formulas we need to remember, memorize, know how to use, given hydronium, solve for pH, or given pH, solve for hydronium, and that's 10 raised to the negative pH power. So for this problem, we're going to solve for hydronium, the H3O plus, by simply taking 10 raised to the negative 5.8. Let me remind you what that looks like on your calculator. Type in 10, and then sometimes you have a caret key or just some sort of raising to the power of, and make sure you make the pH negative. And of course I forgot what it was, 5.8. 5.8 and then equals. And you see there's your answer for the concentration. So let's do that on our paper, 10 raised to the negative 5.8. And again, on my calculator that I'm using a handheld, I have a caret key. The one that's on Google here uses this x raised to the y, but they really are the same function. All right, so you just have to get familiar with what your calculator looks like. 10 raised to the power, and notice that this Google gave me a one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five zeros. One, two, three, four, five zeros. And then a one, five, eight, four, however you wanna write that. Or you can write that in scientific notation, 1.58 times 10 to the negative six. And these are molar units for the concentration of hydronium. So you may certainly write it out in standard form or scientific. They're both the same in my mind, it's just whatever works better for you. This of course is standard, this of course is scientific notation. Let's try these. What is the concentration of the acid ion corresponding to each of these pH values? So simply for letter A, we're going to take 10 raised to the power of 10.2, negative 10.2. 10 raised to the negative 7.8. 10 raised to the negative 4.3. 10 raised to the negative pH gives us the concentration of hydronium ion. 10 raised to the power of negative pH. Here I find 6.31 times 10 to the negative 11 molar units. That's our concentration of the power of hydrogen ion. 10 raised to the negative 7.8. That's the same as writing 1.58 
times 10 to the negative 8 molar units, the concentration of the hydronium ion. 10 raised to the negative 4.3. What'd you find? 5.01 times 10 to the negative 5th molar units. 